A top U.S. general within the Air Force just revealed that the Chinese spy balloon might have contained explosives inside of it in order to be able to self-destruct should it ever get compromised. Furthermore, now that the balloon has been shot down out of the sky and the remnants of it recovered, we know much more about it, such as its dimensions, its payload, as well as its functionalities. Although, to be frank, what you and me, the common plebes, get to know is very likely a tiny fraction of what the government knows, and we only know whatever they're willing to tell us. Regardless, let me break down for you what we have been told thus far, what's been revealed thus far after the U.S. Navy and U.S. Coast Guard collected the debris from the Atlantic Ocean right there off the coast of North Carolina. And I hope that if you appreciate content like this, you do take a super quick moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons so the YouTube algorithm will share this video out to ever more people. Now, to start with, the balloon itself weighed over 2,000 pounds and was about as tall as a 20-story building, which is approximately 200 feet. Then, the actual payload beneath the balloon was about as long as a regional airplane, and it consisted of several hundred feet of mostly glass solar panels. Then, right there in the middle, it was equipped with a super, super high-definition surveillance camera, which allowed it to capture images of whatever it was floating over. The U.S. Air Force general then mentioned that the balloon was potentially carrying a self-destruct mechanism, although during that press conference, he did stop short of 100% confirming whether or not there were actually explosives on board. Furthermore, the Chinese balloon also had several antennas with priority sensors on them, which allowed it to intercept communication signals in the areas that it was flying over. And of course, the areas that it was flying over, well, they happened to include an American nuclear base over in Montana, the U.S. Strategic Command Center in Nebraska, as well as another one of our military bases over in Missouri, which happened to house several of our nuclear bombers. And the best part of all this is that according to a statement that was released by U.S. intelligence officials just yesterday, the American government knew about this balloon and was apparently tracking it ever since it took off from the southern coast of China. Let me repeat that. According to a statement that was released just yesterday, U.S. intelligence officials claim to have been tracking this Chinese balloon ever since it took off from Hainan Island in the southern coast of China. Then, in that same statement, the U.S. officials went on to say that they were tracking the balloon as it was going eastwards towards Guam and Hawaii before it suddenly made an unexpected move north towards Alaska. And they conceded, in their statement at least, that this change in direction might have indeed been an accident. Quote, Given the path, it's possible that the balloon was blown off course by weather. But U.S. officials said that once it came south over the continental United States, it was being controlled by China. Meaning that according to the statement at least, these U.S. intelligence officials are claiming that the spy balloon was likely going to Guam and Hawaii, but was instead blown off course to Alaska. But once in Alaska, the Chinese military again apparently regained control of it and made the best of the situation and did what they did. However, I believe it's important to view this type of statement from the U.S. government critically with a healthy dose of skepticism. Because right now, the Biden administration has two very important objectives. The first is to deter China from running more of these balloon operations. And the second is to give them a diplomatic way out so that they can save face and the diplomatic relations between the two countries can get reestablished. And so a statement from unnamed U.S. officials, which happens to align perfectly with these two goals, should be viewed skeptically. Because their statement is essentially claiming that, for one, we knew all along about this balloon because our surveillance capabilities are so great, and therefore there's no way that China can fly one of these balloons without us knowing. And secondly, that it might have indeed blown off course by the weather, which would align perfectly with what the Chinese regime has been saying all along. Now, this might all be true. However, it might also not be true, given how it's just so conveniently aligned with what the Biden administration is trying to achieve especially when you consider the fact that on the very same day that this U.S. intelligence statement was released, Kamala Harris was giving an interview to Politico where she said that the Chinese spy balloon episode should not impact U.S.-China relations. Quote, Kamala Harris said the recent U.S. downing of a Chinese surveillance balloon over American waters should not have an impact on diplomatic relations between the two global superpowers. She's then quoted as saying this, quote, I don't think so. No, we see competition but not conflict or confrontation. And so you can make up your own mind as to the veracity of this U.S. intelligence statement. However, I will mention this. If it's true that the U.S. knew about this balloon well before it reached Alaska, well, that really only opens up a lot more questions. For one, why didn't they do anything about it? Secondly, why did they not inform their Canadian counterparts, who apparently had no idea what was going on? What would have happened if no one in Montana saw the balloon in the sky? Would the U.S. government just keep the whole thing under wraps and not tell anyone about it? And then lastly, if we knew about this balloon all along, 
And if even further, we knew about the Chinese Communist Party's balloon program for several years now, why is it that the Biden administration is only taking action now? Because you see, last Friday, the Biden administration put six different Chinese groups who are suspected of being connected to China's spy balloon program on what's known as the entities list, meaning that they're barred from doing any business or receiving any money from people in the U.S., people or entities in the U.S., which, of course, sounds like a reasonable action to take, but it just raises the question. If we knew about this program for so long, if we knew about this Chinese balloon program for several years, why was this action only taken now? Of course, I don't speculate about these things, but I think it's a good question to ask. And to me, it brings to mind the old adage of the tail wagging the dog. Does the media in this country report on what the government does, or does the government do whatever it is that the media decides to highlight? And frankly, in this case, it seems to be the latter, that because this incident became national news, the Biden administration had to take action. But again, that's just pure speculation on my part. You can make your own decision on what actually happened here. Regardless, after shooting down the Chinese spy balloon off the coast of North Carolina, suddenly there seems to be an endless number of other objects that the Air Force has been shooting out of the sky. For instance, last Friday, they shot down something that was as big as a car flying over the northeastern part of Alaska. Then, the very next day, the U.S. Air Force flew into Canada to shoot down another unidentified object flying over the Yukon Territory. That target so far has only been described as a small cylindrical object. Then, the very next day, which was Super Bowl Sunday, the U.S. Air Force once again scrambled their jets to shoot down a fourth octagonal object over the Great Lakes in the state of Michigan, specifically over Lake Huron. That means that within the span of eight days, the U.S. Air Force shot down four different targets, one balloon and three other objects which are yet to be identified. And they remain unidentified to this very day. In fact, the latest update, which came two days ago, had the Pentagon spokesman, Mr. John Kirby, saying this, quote, there's no question in our minds that the Chinese balloon was designed to surveil, that it was an intelligence asset. We knew exactly what that thing was. These other three didn't have propulsion. They weren't being maneuvered. They were basically being driven by the wind. We don't know for sure whether they had a surveillance aspect to them, but we can't rule it out. And so that's where we currently stand. No one knows exactly where these mystery objects were, but the legacy news outlets in this country now have something interesting to focus on, rather than covering, let's say, the giant chemical fire that's devastating the eastern part of Ohio. If you'd like to read, read my research notes for today's episode, I'll throw all those links down into the description box below. All right, just to pause here for a super quick moment, I wanted to mention that the sponsor of today's episode is a super cool company called Secure. And they're a cool company for people that actually care about their privacy. Because listen, if you don't think that these giant tech conglomerates and all these different alphabet agencies within the US government are spying on your messages, well, then frankly, you are not paying enough attention to the news. However, all that can be in the past because with Secure, they have awesome proprietary technology that has all your messages and all your emails actually go through Switzerland as they're making their way back and forth between you and your recipient. And so let's say you're here in America and the person you're messaging is over in Canada, Mexico, or anywhere else in the world. Well, it doesn't matter because all your messages are actually going through Switzerland back and forth through from one to another, meaning that they're not subject to the Cloud Act and they are only subject to Swiss laws, which are some of the safest in the entire world. Their technology is awesome, it's proprietary, and they're a company that actually cares about your freedom. They care about getting the facts out, which is why they sponsor a company like ours. And best of all, they are offering a 25% off deal for our viewers, for the viewers of Facts Matter. So head on over to secure.com and use promo code ROMAN to get 25% off. And the rates are not even that expensive to start with. It's only $5 for the messenger and $10 for the email and messenger combo. And they even offer a seven day free trial. So again, head on over to secure.com, use promo code ROMAN, save some money and support an awesome sponsor. And then lastly, I'd love to know what you think. Is this whole thing a distraction from the real problems that this country is facing? Or do you think it's in that positive, since so many people have suddenly woken up to the threat that the Chinese Communist Party poses to us here in America? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section. I'll be reading them later tonight and well into the week. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free.